I will lead America towards energy independence. This is, this may turn out, as this campaign moves along, to be the second most important priority. And maybe as we move along and discuss it, we'll move it up in the list. The second most important priority because this is a matter of national security now. It's not just a matter of our economy. We should not have to see our money going to our enemies. We should not have to see our allies have to give money to our enemies. In the case of Iran, we don't really deal with Iran, but a lot of Europe has to, and a lot of Asia has to. And what we should do is to develop energy independence so we're in a position where we have the leverage on our side, not on theirs. This means expanding the use of ethanol, biodiesel. It means uh, looking at nuclear power. We, haven't, we have not uh, licensed a nuclear power facility in 25 or 30 years. France is 85% nuclear. China is licensing 40 or more nuclear power plants. Nuclear power is dangerous, so is every form of power. But no one's died from nuclear power in the United States. So the commitment here is to expand it, make sure it's safe, make sure it's even safer. But that becomes a way in which we can move toward energy independence. And we can also deal with the, with the goal of making sure that we don't, we don't contribute to global warming. We have to take uh, all of the clean coal and, and carbon sequestration technologies, and we have to get it to the stage that it's cost effective. There's more, uh, or at least as much, in coal reserves in the United States as there are oil reserves in Saudi Arabia. Aren't we better off relying on our coal reserves than seeing that money going to the Middle East? <laughs> Solar technology, wind technology, all these things are there. They're usable. Problem is when it isn't windy and it isn't sunny, the lights go out or the air conditioning goes off. And the reality is, we have to see if we can't get to a stage with that through research and development, through supporting it and pushing it, we have to see if we can't get to the stage that we can have consistent power, where you can take the wind power and the solar power, retain it, and then deliver it over a consistent period of time. That would be just a, really a major breakthrough if we could accomplish that. And then we do have oil reserves in the United States. We have oil reserves in Canada, Mexico, reliable places that we can deal with, and offshore. And we have to crack through the special interests that are stopping us from utilizing some of that. And then we have to do conservation better. We have to convince the American people to conserve. Ethanol helps in a way to accomplish that, but we have to convince the American people to tie their activities to the impact that they're making right now on this lack of energy independence. You've got to do all these things. And here's the spirit with which you have to do it. You have to do it the way the United States put a man on the moon. Remember in the 1950s, well, some of you remember, the young people out here, it's in their history books. This little baby here will learn about it sometime in the future. But the reality is, that in the late 1950s, the Soviet Union surprised Eisenhower, surprised the American people. They put the first man in space. Well, this was a shock to the American people. We were embarrassed, we were humiliated. Eisenhower made a commitment. The commitment was we were going to get to the moon before they did. Kennedy increased that commitment and really, really took it to a much greater stage. Johnson took it to an even greater stage, and Nixon got it done. Two Democrats, two Republicans, working together in the national interest. That's how we have to do energy independence. No excuses, no backtracking. It has to be a major commitment. If I become President of the United States, in the same way that I did the impossible, reducing crime, reducing welfare, reducing a deficit, and taking an unmanageable city and making it the best example of urban governance in the country, according to Time magazine, we can do it with energy independence. And I'll report to you on it. We'll have an energy stat program in which we show. I will measure every week, and I will report to you on a regular basis how we're making progress, where we're making progress, and how we're going to get to the ultimate goal of a country that is energy independent and has its destiny within its own control and not in the control of some of its enemies.
One final thought about energy independence, which we'll bring up in a few moments. But this is a great industry for us, too. If, if we can get ourselves to energy independence, we can sell this to the rest of the world. China needs energy independence. India needs energy independence. Isn't that the way to deal with our trade deficit? Isn't the way to deal with our trade deficit to figure out not how we put on more tariffs, not to figure out how we put our heads down and defend ourselves, but let's go on, let's go on the offensive. Let's figure out what we can sell them. We can sell them these technologies. If we can develop it for ourselves, China is going to need it more than we do. India is going to need it more than we do. The rest of the world is going to need it more. So, yes, we're buying things from them, but we should have bigger and better things to sell them. And energy independence is one of those things.